I first became aware of Suzanne and the program she was doing at the Renaissance Society around 1980, I would say. I was a young curator, or aspiring curator, and right from the beginning, she's been one of those people who inspired me, that I looked up to, who became a mentor, um, and she has remained that over the last uh, 30 plus years. I do remember very early on in my time living in Chicago, the Raymond Pettibone exhibition, and just being so impressed uh, that someone could bring a position of real connoisseurship and clarity to such an overwhelming volume as an exercise in kind of curatorial muscle uh, that impressed me enormously. She really values looking. She values the experience of being with the art. And she's very clear and um, transparent about her relationship to what she's looking at and, and how it matters to her. So in that way, I think she's really very kind of alongside an artist. She sees something in the work that she finds compelling and she trusts her own vision of what that is. And as an artist, it's incredibly beneficial to work with someone like that because then you can push the boundaries of your own practice. I was invited to do the show by Suzanne, but it didn't come with any strictures. You know, I got to do what I wanted to do. And uh, the thing was, it's an invitation to kind of step up and do some of the most ambitious work you can imagine. <laughs> I, I took that as a real challenge, you know, to do the most ambitious thing I can imagine. And to develop a show that had this thing I call scope. You're talking about going to the edge. We went to the edge, I think. <laughs> I can remember saying, okay, well, I want all these refrigerator doors, and I kind of sent off my request, and I can remember wondering what would come back, and not much came back, just okay. And then I got there and all the doors were there. It was very, I was like struck by how little tension there was. You could say it's courageous, but I think because she's had a, a, a long enough history of, of operating with artists that way, it's not really courageous in her regard, it's just the way she operates. You know, so it's not an exception to the rule. It, it is just the way she does it. Curatorial independence was critical because no one on the board was competent to uh, make those decisions, and Suzanne was fantastic at making those decisions. I think she scouted the world and, and got to meet other people who were looking at what was happening in the art world, and she was among the first to A, grasp it, and secondly, to uh, then present it. I mean, that's, uh, that was... I think that was how she grew here. Suzanne has a, an uncanny eye and an ability to identify artists whose work is, is going to be important. Suzanne has an ability to, in a way, predict the future in a, in a, in a very real way. Select an artist who, at a particular moment in time, will resonate with the larger society in an important way and in a relevant way. She remains incredibly open. And so I think it's also an extraordinary ability for somebody who's been involved in this work for so long to keep engaging young artists, new artists. So often people get locked into a, a generation or a period where they're, they've, they've come of age or where they're comfortable. And Suzanne has never stopped in her curiosity, her seeking out new ideas and, and young artists. And, and that commitment has never wavered and that integrity has never been uh, compromised. I think it's her boldness and her commitment to, to art. She also, though, is fond of numbers. She's not afraid of a budget. And in fact, she was extremely good at both the artistic and the business. Making clear that she was responsible for both was very important for professionalizing the organization. She's both chief curator and director, and there aren't very many institutions uh, like us, like the Renaissance Society, to have both the administrative executive authority and the curatorial wherewithal to support a project you know, on the spot and able to make decisions quite quickly and very confidently. 
I think the Renaissance society is seen as an extraordinarily special, exceptional place. It's a kind of treasure among institutions uh, in the world. Even you know, people who haven't been here, haven't had the chance to see it, it it's one of the things that people pay attention to that stands for a, a commitment to artists, to uncompromising quality, taking risks, being a laboratory. It is never a matter of simply presenting a work. It is always also a matter of catalyzing new work and of encouraging an artist to go in a new direction and assisting an artist in achieving the next level of his or her artistic expression. This is, I think, the primary reason that Suzanne has won the heart of the entire art community. At every level, she is a contributor to the larger um, artistic conversation. One of the big discussions in the arts community is always between this local versus global. And um, one of the great things about Suzanne is that she makes that discussion totally irrelevant because she can take the international and bring it to Chicago and everyone just feels comfortable and knowledgeable about it at the same time that she can take Chicago artists and if she's showing them, everyone else in the world says, these, these are, are significant and important artists, we should pay attention as well. I mean, the Renaissance Society is very often uh, like the mouse that roars, right? I mean, it's this kind of extraordinarily, or seemingly modest institution, but in fact, its, its impact nationally, internationally is so significant. One of the things I admire is the kind of quiet modesty of, of the program, that having a really significant, meaningful, intellectual conversation about contemporary art, about the nature of creativity, about the nature of global production, that this can happen on a university campus, that it can happen for an audience of, of devoted followers, that it can bring in new people, and, and really you know, has helped define the field, you know, has set standards um, around commissioning works of art that many, many other institutions have borrowed, learned from, and borrowed from the Ren as a national model. I think the important part of it is that it's challenging, something I hadn't seen, wasn't familiar with, but the, the knowledge of that artwork was very important to me, that I had seen it and had the chance to be critical. This could be the perfect, the perfect location or the perfect situation, given that the university by its very nature, I mean, the definition of a university is reaching out to the furthest edges of inquiry, you know, and trying to see uh, what's beyond that. You'll see challenging new art. You'll see something new that you probably won't see anyplace else. You'll see a complete statement by an artist exactly as they intended it to be seen. As Michelin would say, worth the detour. And uh, I tell everyone when they come to Chicago, you've got to go there because it's going to be some kind of a special experience. There are great museums all over the world, but the Renaissance Society is something very singular and very particular. You know, we, we get jaded, we end up with kind of habits we hang on to. You go and you have to be completely open and you'll be rewarded. Mm -hmm.